preview of what I've got coming up soon. It's going to have to be um, a few videos because it's taken me about 30 hours of work to get to here. But I basically removed all of my raised beds, all 12 of them. And I'm going to go back to in-ground gardening. And I'm going to try to make this short. But let me go over why I'm doing that after having raised beds for seven years now. Um, when I first bought this property, you can see right here, this heavy clay soil, which is like concrete. Um, couldn't grow anything in it. So, I tried for like two years and just couldn't do it, get it to do anything matter of fact you couldn't even till the ground with a tiller <laughs> it was literally that hard um, I tried the first year to till a path from down around that fence up along here just about running where the fence lines at I think it took 13 hours to make one pass about four inches deep one pass four inches deep Smaller tiller than that one is actually a front tine tiller and I know they're not the best But I could just tell from that that it was not going to be an easy job So the next year I started building raised beds um, I had 12 raised beds the first year I used uh, store-bought soil and compost and All kinds of stuff. I was just starting my homestead up first thing I noticed was how hot the raised beds get the raised beds are being they're above the ground so they don't have as much mass as what the earth ground has and with the sun beating down on them they would just get extremely hot that meant you had to water them more so the first year was kind of like my learning year about them I not only had to water them more I had to use a whole lot of nutrients because basically the nutrients would just wash out of the soil so the second year I had the raised beds, I put the drip irrigation in. You can see it got drip irrigation all the way down both sides. It fed both beds. The problem with that is if you have an unlimited water supply, like if you're on city water or county water, drip irrigation on raised beds, that'd probably work for you. And if you need to put extra nutrients in, that'll probably work for you also. You could just go to the store and buy you some new nutrients, and every time you turn on faucet, you got water. But when you're trying to be self-sufficient, I'm not wanting to go and buy nutrients. I should be able to put some compost on the beds and be done with it. That should be enough nutrients for the year. What I found, I was struggling. I had goats, goat manure, goat straw, hard pack. I had rabbits, so rabbit manure, rabbit straw, and I had chickens. So the chicken coop, straw poop and manure wasn't even enough to fertilize the 12 raised beds that I had for one for one growing season let alone more than one the other thing that happened was I put down um, weed barrier in every walkway and inside of every bed before I filled them up with soil and that worked great for the first year but the second year the weeds started coming on and by the third year, the weeds, you would just struggle to take, get the weeds out of the bed. Because what was happening was, it wasn't that weeds was growing through the uh, weed barrier. You can actually see this is one of the walkways right here. No, not a single weed. You can go over here and look. Not a single weed. And like this is one of the walkways that was covered up by the weed barrier. Not a single weed. But what happens is, is that the seeds get blown around by the wind. And they land on top of your soil and stuff that you put on the ground and then they embed themselves and they root <laughs> just like a garden seed would right so then over time the longer you go the more weeds you have and then it just gets to be where you got more weeds you literally i could come out here every day and spend a whole entire day pulling weeds out of those raised beds and the one advantage was they were easier to pull up but with an in-ground garden what i can do is i can make the rows wide enough and take my tiller and go right down between the rows and never have to pull a single weed so that's kind of like the reasons why oh yeah the other thing 
Um, so the biggest reason though was that even though I had drip irrigation, so the third year when I, the second year I put the drip irrigation in, the garden did better. The third year was probably the best year that I had. I had figured out the nutrient problem. I had figured out the water problem. Best garden I ever had. The weeds wasn't too bad yet then. The problem was in July or August when the weather got dry and I'm on a cistern, which means the only water I have is whatever rainwater I collect. And keeping the beds watered, I basically run out of water for my house. Then I had to call and pay somebody to bring water out here. And that was like 2018, I think. Might have been 2019. Either way, I had to pay to have water brought out here. 1,500 gallons of water was $130. Now, I, I think I had to have water brought out here once or twice after that. But kind of what I'm getting at is, actually it's 2000, I know for sure it's 2018 now. So I think I had to bring, pay to have water 2018, 2019. And then, you know, imagine how much it would probably cost now to have water brought out here. One of them big old trucks, because a big old truck takes a big old engine. Big old engines drink a lot of gas. Gas prices are sky high right now. So... While I had cancer, I was thinking about, um, you know, if I made it out of the cancer, if I beat the cancer, what I was going to do to change this garden, because the other thing that started happening too, was that the wood that I built the raised beds out of started to rot. And you can come see us over here. Look at how much lumber has gone up since 2016, 2017 when I built them. That's what the lumber look like so now i was going to have to build all those race beds again and i was just like you know no no i ain't going to do it i'm just going to go back to in-ground gardening because i had all this great soil that was in the raised beds that i could then till in with the compost and make it better you can or till in with the clay and then that clay will help it retain water. And clay, even though you can't hardly grow anything in it, is trapped with all kinds of nutrients. So the goal was I was going to solve everything by simply getting rid of the raised beds and going back to in-ground gardening. You know, I had probably 10 inches of soil and 12 beds that was going to get spread out, tilled in with the clay, which actually did a really good job. You can kind of see like some clumps. Now I've raked this and a lot of the clumps are toward the bottom now. But you can see the clay clumps where the tiller, that's actually a rock. But you can see the clumps. Looks like a cat litter box, right? <laughs> but it's actually clay soil. So over time though, that clay is still get finer and finer and chopped up, mixed in better with the uh, good soil. And then I've solved all the problems, all the problems. Every problem I had is solved by going back to in-ground gardening. Now, granted, I don't know, I had 8 to 10, maybe 12 inches. I had 12-inch tall raised beds, and they were nearly full. They were within an inch, maybe 2 inches tops to the top. So I had 10 inches of soil, 4 by 8 wide, 12 beds in this area. And I basically just tore them out, leveled the soil out the best I could with a rake, run my garden tiller, which only took about 30 minutes to do all this. I'm gonna have to do it a couple times. And basically I've got this whole entire year to get this leveled out in the way I want it. Cause I'm not gonna put out a garden this year. Um, anyways, I just wanted to bring this up. I have a whole series of videos. that actually shows me, you know, tearing up the weed barrier, which was a whole lot of fun. Let me tell you that. Tearing down the beds, getting the soil that was in the bed spread out with a garden rake and then uh spreading it out even more run this tiller spreading it out even more and you know I, i'll have a i'll have a few more times of doing this because this garden was kind of like a terrace garden i had a flat spot then a little wall then a flat spot then a wall flat spot wall all the way down through there and so now i got to make all that leveled back out again 
with this good soil and get it mixed in with the clay. Anyways, hope you stick around. I have videos on this tiller. I have videos on my small electric tillers. I don't think I did a video on the... Uh, I don't, I don't really think I did a video on the drip irrigation. I probably should have done one, but I never did. And that was way back in like 2015 or 2016. Um, but anyways, drip irrigation is pretty simple. And anyways, thanks for watching. As always, God bless you. God bless your families. God bless your homesteads.